while she's shooting the video. <laughs> What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Vanland. My name is Katie. I am the face behind all of the YouTube videos that you guys enjoy and also all the social media posts from Instagram. We are so excited because today we are going to be answering your top questions from the luxury van build tour that we released a couple of weeks ago. The response from that video was absolutely heartwarming to us. It was so incredible to see all of your positive feedback about the van and it was also really interesting to read all of your questions too. In that video, we did ask what questions you had about the van. There were a couple things that we kind of left out when we were doing the tour and we're really excited to share more details about that. We also asked you guys on Instagram for your questions as well. So if you aren't following us on Instagram, make sure to click the link below and head over there and give us a follow. We're always posting a bunch of really cool behind the scenes stuff that happens here. If you're from Instagram, maybe you even saw a little bit of BTS a couple months ago of this van being built out. So let us know in the comments if you're one of the longtime followers. Uh, but basically, I have all of the questions right here on my phone. I'm going to be asking them to Jeremy, and we're going to go over the top questions that you guys left. <laughs> Question number one was by Michael Paul Cote or Cote. Um, I apologize in advance if I pronounced your name incorrectly. Uh, but Michael asked, well, first he said, very impressive. Thank you. Um, what is the loaded weight of the van, water, fuel, and all? Okay, great question. It's really important to know the final weight of a built-out van for a couple of reasons. In order to tune the suspension correctly, and then also just to make sure that the van is under the GVWR weight rating that it's, it's allowed to carry. Um, we have not weighed this van yet, but this is something that we're gonna do today. So we're gonna fuel up and fill the water tanks in here and basically get it to where um, the weight that it would be when you're about to leave for a trip. Um, and then we're gonna take it to the scales. We're gonna weigh the front axle, the real, rear axle, and then we'll get the combined weight rating and then share that with you guys. So actually, do you wanna just go and do that right now? Yeah, let's okay, head out. Let's out. here at the resource recovery this is where we're going to get the van weighed what we're going to do is pull up to the booth ask them to weigh us and i'm going to try to get the front axle and the rear axle weighed independently and then the whole van at once just to make sure they, they add up i'm just going to read the definition of the gross vehicle uh, weight rating which is the gvwr it is the weight of the vehicle at full capacity it includes the curb weight or empty weight plus the weight of the driver all passengers engines fluids fuels and the cargo that the vehicle is carrying it does not include the weight the vehicle may be towing. So the GVWR on this van is 9050, 9050, and we are at 9080. So it is actually 30 pounds fully loaded um, over the recommended maximum vehicle weight. And in terms of the um, actual axles, they measure under what the GVWR is for the front and rear somehow. So it's listed on here as 4410 for the front and we're at 3980. And then the rear at 5360 and we're at 5080. So basically all said and done after this vehicle was built and fully loaded up and has all the water and all the fluids in it, we're basically right at the recommended GVWR. So. All good. We're back. Okay, we're back. That was so fast. It makes it so easy on the internet. I know, right? <laughs> All right, question number two was by Cameron Wright, and he asked, how was the painting of the van done? It sounded like it was all handled in-house. Okay, um, sorry if it sounded like that. It was, the painting was done at a, a professional automotive paint shop here at Vanland. One of the few things we don't have is a paint booth, even though we have all these amazing vehicles. Just due to some of the equipment that you need and the regulations, we send everything to a paint shop to have it done. This started out as a completely white van. And the clients wanted something a little different. We did consider putting a wrap on it, but ultimately paint will hold up longer and we think it just kind of looks better over the long term. So we went with a full actual paint job on it. So that's how it was done. All right, so question number three was asked by Mark. He said, so I'm out for a week in below freezing temperatures. How would that work without running the engine? 
half time. And then, oh, I don't know how to pronounce this name, but he asked um, if it, yeah, <laughs> he asked if there's winterization mechanisms. Winterize, is that a word? Right, yes, winterization. Um, so like any RV, um, when you take it to extremely cold temperatures, the probably the best thing to do is to drain the water system. If you are really gonna be in a place that's super cold and it's not gonna heat up, um, even during the day, then draining the water system is basically what you would do with any RV to winterize it. So yes, we do have valves where you can drain the under um, undermounted water tank, um, the water heater, and actually all the pipes inside can be drained. If you want to run the vehicle with the water system when it's not when it's cold but not extremely cold, typically we recommend running the hot water in a loop through the system. So basically we have a valve in the van that you can turn. The water from the water heater will be cycled through into the fresh water tanks and all of the water system, including the water pump, which is located inside. So doing that a couple times a day, it will heat up the water in the system and make it really, really difficult to, to freeze. In terms of the wastewater tank, uh, a typical thing to do for the gray water tank that we have in here would be to pour a little bit of antifreeze down the sink drains or the shower drain. That puts antifreeze in the tank and will prevent it generally from uh, freezing up in moderately cold to freezing temperatures. Um, but again, if you're gonna be in extreme cold, if you're going to Montana for a month in the winter and this is gonna be parked outside the whole time, uh, probably draining the system is the mm -hmm. right thing to do. The next question was asked by Lynn and she asked, fresh water, gray, black, battery, and price. So okay. water tanks. Water tanks, yes. One of the design considerations for this van is that we wanted to put almost as much water on board mm -hmm. as we could. In my experience being out trying to stay in a van for multiple days, the first thing you run out of is water, typically. Mm -hmm. So what we did is a 22 gallon tank inside of fresh water, a 21 gallon tank outside of fresh water. So combined, that's 43 gallons of fresh water, plus a five gallon water heater, which you can add to that. So we're looking at nearly 50 gallons of fresh water. The gray water tank is also a 22 gallon tank um, and that's underneath as well. So there's a lot of water storage. I'd estimate probably a solid four to five days of water on board, even with washing, showering, cooking and that. So tons of water. Tons of water. <laughs> yes. Okay, the next question is from Daniel Maureen, and he asked, storage under, under the bed would like to see the rear cargo doors open. So okay. let's go ahead and head outside and yeah, give the full garage look. tour that we missed in the original one. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, so here it is, folks. Here's the garage area that we forgot to show you on the last video. This is a garage that's meant more for some soft goods, definitely not like bicycles or other large equipment like that. Being a little bit more of a refined build, we actually went with the white cabinetry in the back too, which we think looks really good and it keeps it super bright in here, but it's not your kind of um, dirty, gnarly adventure gear. Uh, type storage. If it was, we would do it with probably a little bit different materials so that it was um, a little bit more robust. But what we've done is put on this side the power system in the lower part of the box. Over here we have the water system and then we have these two rather large cubbies. Those are perfect for stuffing in like chairs or blankets or stuff sacks, things like that that you uh, don't need to get to every moment of the day but you want to have kind of securely stored and put away. So starting with the power system, we had a lot of questions on this as well, um, and we didn't get to answer all of them. So uh, let me just kind of go over the basic power system specs first. It is a 600 amp hour, all Victron lithium power system with smart devices throughout. So we have three of the 200 amp hour um, smart lithium batteries, a 2000 watt um, Victron inverter, we also have a solar charge controller, a BMS, and all of the fuses and wires that make this all work together. So looking in here, you can see batteries are in the back. You don't really need to access those very often, so we kind of put them in the least accessible spot, although we could still get to them. We have some access panels over here if we need to get in. Then we come over to all of the fuses and wires the bus bars, shunt, 
basically all the stuff that you would need to access, we put a little closer to the back. Everything is labeled so that if there is a fuse blown, something's not working, it's very easy to find out what it is um, just by looking at the labeling. And um, if you've seen any of our Victron uh, videos before, you'll know that we really love this equipment for vans, um, specifically because of the smart features. You're able to look at all of everything that's going on with your power system, basically on the app via your phone. So with a Bluetooth, Bluetooth connection, you can look at uh, the state of charge of your batteries, how much solar you're getting in, how much alternator power you're generating, um, and that's all without having to actually get back in here. So we think it's super cool, and uh, ever since we switched to all Victron systems, we've been super happy and so have our clients. Miles Fong asked specifically, what size inverter did you use for this van? Okay, in this van, we went with the 2000 watt Victron inverter. Um, there's actually very little in this van that runs off of the AC power. Uh, for instance, there's no microwave, there's no induction cooktop, and if you do uh, want to power the uh, water heater with 110 volt power. It's actually just pass through power when you're plugged into shore power um, that you can heat the water. So um, the 2000 watt inverter is what we went with in here. We know a lot of people like the 3000 watt and certainly if you're going to be putting in more equipment that uses um, AC power, it's worth stepping up to that. But this one, um, it's, it's a little bit lighter weight, it's smaller, it's still a really good charger and we don't need some of the features that come with the 3000 watt inverter so that's why we chose this one. So while we're talking about the power system of the van, another question that we got was regarding the water heater. And uh, the question is, how do you get hot water when you stay two or three days without moving the van? Okay, yeah, good question. Um, so this uh, van uses the heat transfer system or calorifier from uh, the engine coolant to heat five gallons of water. With that, of course, if you're not driving the van, the water temperature is going to start to drop over time. We do have an AC power connection to the water heater, so if you're parked and you're able to plug into shore power for the days that you're stopped, then um, you can just flip the switch right here and you will have AC power going to the water heater. And it's thermostat controlled, so it will just keep the water hot inside that tank. If you're parked for multiple days off grid, then basically to get hot water, you need to start the van. That's how you would do it. It takes 30 minutes um, or so, you should be able to get a nice tank of hot water. And then from there, you have uh, a good number of hours, um, usually at least 12 hours of hot water following that. So we do find that most people drive their vans every day when they're using them, but for people who don't, there is a way to get hot water you know, when you're, when you're not moving and starting the van. Great. Also, while we're talking about the power system, we have a couple questions about the solar panels. So yes. how about we head up to the roof of the van and I'll ask you there. Okay. All right, we're up here on the roof, so let's talk solar. What questions did we have? Hugo Lerner, and he said, how else do you top off 600 amps of battery? 100 watts of solar is definitely not enough. Is there a larger alternator, generator? Do you rely on shore power? Um, great question. I think probably of all the questions we got in comments, there were more regarding the solar system than anything else. Um, and let me start by saying I love solar electricity. I love the sun, and I think Having solar power on your van is pretty much a must, but at the same time, there's really only so much of it that you can fit on top of, the, of a roof rack like this with all the equipment we have. And then also, there's only so much power that you're ever gonna get from solar panels. So to answer the question, we have 100 watts of solar up here, and yes, we do rely on the alternator charge to provide most of the power to recharge the batteries. As a matter of fact, if we maxed out the solar on this particular van, I just took some measurements and we probably could only get at maximum 300 watts up here. Um, and that sounds great. So if you have 100 watts, why not put 300 watts and get three times as much power from the sun? And that all sounds good until you take into consideration the fact that we would be giving up the entire platform on the roof rack. Um, for us, it's not enough of a, of a gain in value from the solar to eliminate the opportunity to basically sit on the, on the roof rack and store things up here as well. So that's probably the number one reason we don't add more solar. 
The second reason is if you have not experienced this before, solar panels on roof racks are almost always dirty. They do require that they are cleaned on a regular basis if you want to have them work at maximum efficiency. If you cut off all the access to the solar panels, you can't clean them either. So the uh, amount of power that they're bringing in will continually degrade due to the fact that the glass is dirty. So you really need room on the roof rack to access the solar panels so that you can clean them. So that's probably the number two reason. And the final reason is that solar panels are great over a long term to help top a battery up or keep it charged if it's you know, going down slowly. But in reality, there's so much more power that comes from the alternator that that's ultimately where most of the power is gonna come from. So just kind of as an example by the numbers, this solar panel here will produce about seven amps when it's in full sun. And of course it can only be in full sun for a few hours out of the day, maybe, maybe up to eight hours. So over eight hours, you might get 56 amp hours of power um, coming from a solar panel. And so that's not really gonna charge up much in terms of 600 amp hours. But when you run the van, the alternator, which this particular van, um, we're pulling power from the factory alternator through the current limiter, uh, BMS. Um, that's in order to protect the alternator from like over discharge and overheating and ultimately failing. So when it's running, the current limiter is pulling in about 30 to 50 amps from the factory alternator. So in comparison to seven amps, Running the engine for one hour will give you up to 50 amps. So there's a big difference between how much power is produced by the alternator and the solar panels. So even if we went with 300 watts up here, we're still only looking at about 21 amps. And that's when it's in full sun and the solar panels are clean and also the temperature is right outside that the solar panel can work efficiently. For all these reasons, uh, we just find that a 100 amp hour solar panel is the best um, situation for this type of vehicle. Now, for instance, if we didn't have an air conditioner up here or we didn't use the skylight and there was more room to put solar panels, we would definitely put them up here. But as it is, we like the platform. Most of the power is coming from the alternator and this also gives us a way to keep this clean. Um, if you guys are interested in a full video about how we kind of spec out the power system, how we decide how much solar, how much battery storage we need, and what size of inverter we're going to use, then just leave a comment below. We'd be more than happy to do a video about that if you guys are interested. Question number eight is by Miles Fong, and he said, oh, okay, this is so kind. One of the best van builds ever. Also, on insulation, I noticed the back doors are bare metal. What did you use to insulate and with what materials? Okay, yeah, good question. Um, so first of all, I'll start by saying that this uh, van build is designed typically for coastal California travel. Mm -hmm. It's not an extreme four weather um, build. It, it could be made that way, basically by adding more insulation and it has a heater, but just doing some additional things to protect it from extreme cold weather. So all of the van is sound deadened and insulated. Um, this particular van, we used the 3M Thinsulate in all of the walls um, and the ceiling, of course. Uh, in the back doors, you know, we have the insulated covers over the windows, so that will buffer kind of the cold air from coming in. And then inside the door channels, uh, where we take the panels off, we stuffed insulation above and below, just so that the door is as insulated as possible. Um, but it's a great question, because anywhere where you can actually see metal that is in contact with the outside, it will actually transfer the cold from the outside to the inside. So yeah, it's worth considering, basically, how is everything insulated if you're going to be in extremely cold weather mm -hmm. yep the next question is by holden daniels and he said nice build looks like there's a skid plate what brand did you go with and type and brand of flooring that you used okay um so this man does actually it do doesn't have a skid plate i think what he might have been seeing is the front of the hammerhead bumper mm -hmm. actually has kind of a deflection plate on the bottom that's probably what he was seeing. Mm -hmm. If we did put skid plates on here, we would almost certainly go with the Van Compass skid plate system because it fits really well. It's like um, covers your engine, your transfer case, your differential, and your um, your fuel tank. So that's typically what we use when we put skid plates on. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, we have a whole video on that actually too. Oh, we'll, cool. we'll link that down below for you guys. Cool. So, okay, type of flooring. Type of flooring. Yeah. This is a lawn seal flooring. So the floors that we use are typically about an inch thick when they're done. 
a quarter inch of closed cell foam insulation underneath and then three quarter inch of marine grade plywood and then the lawn seal is epoxied over that um, and if you guys don't know lawn seal it's very common in the van build industry it's actually an autumn uh sorry not automotive an uh aeronautical Yes, it's, an, <laughs> it's, it's made for the aeronautical industry. Um, Lawn Seal is super durable and is made to have like thousands of steps per day on it. It's also waterproof. It's easy to apply. So that's what the floor is. Hmm. Yeah. And then we also have Inhabit mats in here too. Yeah, yeah we put the Inhabit mats. Um, this one has them up in the front cabin. You can also actually get the Inhabit mats custom cut for anywhere in your van. And that is another way to help insulate the floor. So in any van, unless you have heated floors, the coldest part of the van is typically, typically gonna be the floor. So if you're, again, gonna be in really cold temperatures, you might wanna consider getting some Inhabit mats, which um, have a little bit of additional insulation uh, to walk on when it's cold. Question number 10 was by Jack Bates Photography, and he asked, how exactly did you create the leather parts in the back corners and above the sliding door? Okay, so um, we're referring to all of the metal wrap that we did, and it's one of the more complicated things to do in a van build. It's not really straightforward. You need to have some like craftiness and hopefully some skill with working with those kind of materials. But what we did is we lay down a foam first on the metal, and that just kind of softens it up and insulates it. And we use different thicknesses of foam kind of depending where we do it on the van. Some of it's a quarter inch, some of it's a half, and some of it's even up to an inch thick like on the back the foam gets glued on and then we basically stretch the fabric over it this is like a leatherette type material um, yeah so that's basically what we do question number 11 was by Anne Marie Hubbler and she said amazing fan build what type of toilet did you choose to put in thanks Anne and to all the people who really liked this build we really appreciate uh, all of the comments that we got giving us positive feedback yeah. about the build because obviously we worked on it very hard and we know that there are a bunch of great companies out there so to get respect from people on the work that we did is um, awesome thank you guys so much to your question uh, this particular van has the sea head toilet there's a number of different toilets that are kind of popular in building in van building these days uh, we went in this one with one that was on the smaller side to show you how much room is in here it's actually quite comfortable plenty of room move around if you guys have used different types of toilets in your van like please leave a comment I would like to learn more about your experience with them because um, I haven't had the chance to use a bunch of different types Just as it turns out we don't use our clients toilets <laughs> um, so Shocking. please yeah, exactly <laughs> No testing, that's the one thing we don't test in the van. So basically, if you have experience and have used a toilet in your van for more than a few months, um, please leave your comments in uh, below and we just wanna hear what your feedback is, please. All right, so the next question was, oh, okay, we're getting to the exciting questions okay, now. Nice. Chris Amici asked, what is the time frame for your builds? Specifically this one. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so the time frame on this was almost a year to the day that we received it and then we returned it to the clients. So that's, that's a long time. This van specifically had some unique challenges and unique um, considerations. First of all, it was a completely custom build that we didn't have the design drawn up for already. Mm -hmm. So there was some time in uh, designing out the cabinetry and the galley and how everything's going to fit together. Um, so that added a little bit of time to it. And then secondly, the entire outside of the van was painted. And we that was probably at the painter shop for like three to four weeks. So oh, all wow. together, yeah, it was there for a while. Um, there's, it's a lot of work that goes into painting a van. So I would say like those two things combined probably took about two months. Um, if we were to do it again, which we have clients that do want the same build right now, we're estimating it at probably in the five to six month range to build it out. So yeah, that was, that's how long it took. They always seem to take too long. Um, if you're a client that has been waiting for a van, you know, but trust me, um, there is a lot that goes into this and it's not something that can just be slapped together because if you do that, then as soon as you get on the road, it starts falling apart and uh, that's not what anybody wants. So mm -hmm. it's worth it to just kind of wait for good quality work um, as frustrating as it may be sometimes. Yeah. So the next question is, 
somewhat related to the cost, but what was the total labor hours involved with this build? Okay, um, so just in terms of the build out here, not the paint job or the cabinets we buy as completed. So I'm not gonna include the labor hours in those because that wasn't actually done here either. But in our shop, we spent about 500 hours on this, on this build, so. That's a lot, um, but that's what they take. Yeah. 500 hours is typical for a 170 build that's fully outfitted. We actually created an entire video with 70 Savage about like the realistic time period and cost of building vans. We'll also have that video linked down below for you guys if you're interested in checking that one out as well. Yeah, that's a really good one. If you're yeah. just getting starting, started thinking about having a build done, either if you're gonna do it yourself or you're gonna have it done at a shop, we tried to like, bring some truth to the yeah. situation um, in that video because we think a lot of times it's underestimated how long this will actually take and um, it's probably long longer than you think it will be and it will cost somewhat more that's just that's common yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right talking about cost this was by far the most asked question which is how much did this cost how much did it cost okay uh, if you guys want to know the overall cost of the van what we're gonna do for you is I've actually put together a complete build sheet for this van everything that's included and the total cost to build something like this because we do have clients who are now asking can you build me one of those yeah. and the answer is yes we can um, I'm gonna put it as a link in the description and a document that you can download I always want it to be current for you guys and not to have a document or not for me to give you a price right now that couldn't be honored in the future. So if you download that PDF, you, it'll always be updated and you can see the current price to build this van. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, in case you guys didn't know, we actually um, named this van. Uh, we had been referring to, re referring to it in the shop as the green van because it's green on the outside, but we did name it the Haven. Um, we just thought that really embodied kind of the spirit of this van, which is like if you're out in the wilderness in really adverse conditions and it's raining or cold um, or if you're in the city and there's tons of noise and things going on you can retreat to your van in comfort um, stay warm stay dry do all the things you need to do so we thought haven was the perfect name for it um, so you'll actually see that um, in the documentation of this van build uh, we um, we've named it the haven and that's what you can call it from now on instead yeah. of the green van yeah <laughs> <laughs> that wraps up our q a for this haven van we are so grateful for all of your guys's feedback and comments on our, the tour video it's been so incredible to grow this youtube community with you guys you know jeremy says all the time like we learn so much from you guys and your experiences and it's just so fun to i don't know read all of your comments and, yeah and have participation yeah. from the community thank you guys so much as we're as we're designing new vans and building new vans mm -hmm. we're definitely taking into account all of your comments and the things that you're looking for in a van so thank you so much we really yeah. appreciate it yeah yeah well that wraps up this video so we will see you guys in the next one all right bye, bye. <laughs>